So guys, let's do a full unboxing of Room 25. In fact, we're even going to go through uh, the instruction manual, at least a little bit. Uh, not something we often do in these unboxings. Um, but like I said in the Got Box video for Room 25, uh, there doesn't seem to be much on this game. So I will provide as much of the information as I can for anybody who seems to be watching this. Do do. Let's rip off all the, uh, the exterior here. So Room 25 is a basically, if you've ever seen the movie Cube, it is that, the board game. If they got the license to it, it would probably be called Cube, the board game. Um, it has a maybe a, a lighter tone to it than the actual movie, um, but it's essentially you are trapped in a maze. Maze sometimes has deadly traps. Get out of the maze. Uh, the mode that I play most often is the traitor mode, Suspicion, I believe it's called, uh, where one or two players are a guard and they can, uh, their, their objective is to stop you from escaping. That box lid is not going to stand up at all. No insert in this at all, which is interesting. Oh. Oh, is it in Japanese? No. Okay. So Matt got, uh, often supplies cards in multiple different languages. <laughs> I don't know why. This is the first time I've seen Japanese or Korean or some Asian language. Um, here we go. That's some English. All right. Uh, so I'll have to go through those and find the English ones. Normally, uh, I think it's like just French and German, you know, European languages that they include. Uh, but apparently they've gone Asian as well on these ones, which is fine. Just not something I will be using for the game for obvious reasons. And the fact that I do not speak those languages. And we'll have a look at what those rooms are in a second. So these are... Uh, I believe there's puzzle cards and enigma cards. Okay, so there's various... Okay, let's go... Let's separate the decks here. Uh, so there's ones with gears on the back. Uh, which there are less of. And then ones with question marks and numbers on the back. These gear ones here. Uh, they seem to be locking off rooms of some description. There's X's on those rooms there. So with room 25, you normally have a grid of uh, five by five rooms with a central room. These seem to be locking off rooms. There's this, which I'm presuming does something, which we'll find out later when we go through the instruction manual. Uh, and then these, I'm assuming, is some kind of puzzle that you have to solve in order to unlock a clue. Maybe the numbers indicate difficulty or some kind of time countdown till the end of the game. Let's flip out the instruction manual. And the punch boards. Okay, man. Oh, half it's already punched. All right, so. so these are the various rooms that we have now. Let's have a look at the room list. So there are eight emtheral rooms. As soon as the character moves out of this room, uh, if no other character is still present in the room, the ongoing character applies the transformation effect on the room. Okay, don't know what the transformation effect is yet. Um, and then there's an additional effect here. As soon as one room enters the inferior chamber, they immediately draw an Enigma puzzle card. If other characters ever return into the room, they don't draw anything. Okay. So there's a treatment room. Ooh, that's interesting. Get your adrenaline token back or one action token back if you have lost one, for example, uh, to punishment on map cards. So in, uh, in season two, they introduced uh, adrenaline and map cards. Adrenaline allows you to do a third ability on your turn or a third action on your turn instead of just a normal two. Um, 
and map cards, they either change the room layout, they shift the maze around, or they disable your abilities. Um, in the rules, it's for the entire game. However, I've never played like that. I feel like to lock out your abilities for the entire game is... It locks out three of your five actions. You basically get to move and push, I think, is, is pretty much it. I personally haven't played like that. I've, I've played mainly with new players. I feel like that's a little bit too punishing, especially in the, uh, in the traitor scenarios. Um, but maybe with the, with the treatment room, that might be nice to, uh, to implement. Hacking room, uh, exchange two non-blue rooms or hidden rooms adjacent to this room. So that is essentially um, Kevin's ability. Uh, Kevin has the ability to exchange two adjacent rooms on his turn. Uh, that's basically his ability in, in the card. There is a fake exit. If possible, take a character from an adjacent room and place it with you in this room. The new character does not trigger the effect of the fake exit. Okay, so that's like tricking people. That's going to be kind of useful for guards, honestly. That's interesting. Uh, the hypnosis chamber. You cannot program a move action while in this room. You can only leave the room while your adrenaline token outside. Oh, you can only leave this room. Leave the room. You can only leave the room with your adrenaline token outside help or for some your special ability. Okay. That is also interesting. So you can do a move on your third with the adrenaline token, I assume. Um, hmm, that's an interesting kind of like a almost like a jail, in a way, but with other alternative ways to get out. Uh, the menace room, harmless, ro harmless until room twenty five is visible. This room has the same effect as the mortal chamber when room twenty five is revealed. Everyone in this room is immediately eliminated. That is also very interesting because technically it's safe. It's perfectly safe until room 25 is made visible. Huh. And the fragile room. If the line or column of the room is moved, everyone in the room is immediately eliminated. Place a do not cross marker. The room is now inaccessible. That is also interesting. I like that. Uh, secret code rooms, only in the escape and puzzle mode. Players cannot escape the complex until all four secret code rooms have been activated. There are four different blue rooms, each with a combination of three letters, three digits, four letters, or four digits. Okay, interesting. Uh, so that's the puzzle rooms there, letters, numbers, uh, numbers, letters, fake escape. Treatment, Hypnosis, Fragile. Don't know what this track here is for yet. That's something. Uh, and then these were the Epiphyral rooms. And then that's the, uh, the Super Deadly Menace room, which is interesting. All right. Uh, so these are the answer sheets of some description. Don't know how these work or if that's kind of any kind of spoilers. Let's look at the instruction manual here. That'll give us some more information. All right. Okay, so all empty rooms are replaced with the ephemeral rooms um, and create a face down deck of the unused rooms. So there's going to be more cards on there. So that's what the transformation ability then is. You basically transform the room. That is interesting. And then these are the uh, the escape rooms here. Um, so you must meet conditions to activate the secret code room. Uh, and then each character present in the room is moved to an adjacent room of their choice. The player who performs the control action applies the transformation effect of the room. Uh, the tile is placed aside to account for secret rooms activated. Uh, and then all turn markers are backed up one space on the time track. Now you have one more round in which to get out of the complex. Okay. Clever. So this is the escape room challenge. 100% cooperative for two to six players. And it has a specific setup here. Oh, so you do use all four secret code rooms apparently. That is interesting. And then you choose a scenario, shuffle the eight cards from the chosen scenario without looking them, looking 
at them to form a, a deck next to the game board. What is the scenario? Is that scenarios? Uh, this extension offers ten different scenarios. Each scenario consists of eight different Enigma cards. For a specific scenario, take all Enigma cards marked on the back with that scenario number. Oh, okay. So we basically have ten different escape scenarios uh, based on. The Enigma cards having the numbers here. Eight, nines, and tens. Okay. So there's eight of each. Um, and in higher the number, the higher the complexity. Okay. Interesting. So in each scenario features eight clues to obtain four codes. A four-digit code, a three-digit code, a four-letter code, and a three-letter code. Um, so each code normally only uses two Enigma cards, but then sometimes you need three or four and multiple, they kind of overlap and stuff. Um, so it's basically a little puzzle to solve. And only a player who receives the card can solve it. Oh. You may not show the card to any other players, but you can describe the card to other players as much as you want. Two players who are in the same room can show their Enigma cards to one another and can give or exchange them freely. Oh, this is the decoder. So that's what that whole big uh, cardboard structure is for. So then to activate the secret code room, you have to obviously be in the room. You have to do the control action, and then they must give the code that corresponds to the room. Each player requires a specific type of code, which can be seen in the room's illustration. So the three letters, four letters, three numbers, four numbers. Okay, so then, with the decoder, uh, you basically plug in what you think is the answer. So let's say I think AGXZ is the answer. Uh, and then the decoder will line it up with specific ones of these, specific numbers. And if the numbers match your scenario, then you're good. I think that's how that works there. So then puzzle mode is also a completely cooperative... Uh, mode using the puzzle cards. You do need to activate secret code rooms for it then. Also you place, from what I'm thinking you do here, um, you draw eight and place them face down next to the game board and you draw puzzle cards instead of drawing the uh, the Enigma cards when you enter the ethereal Ephenomenomer rooms. Uh, so you got just eight random ones. The activation is the same as doing it for the Enigmas. Uh, you have to do a control action in that room. So then the uh, code room has to have two, satisfy two constraints of, uh, of the face up Enigma cards, or uh, uh, puzzle cards, sorry. So then it, the puzzle cards are things like uh, the code room cannot be in one of the red cross spaces, it must be adjacent to a green room, um, you must have two characters on the outside edges, three characters in the in the secret code room, things like that. So it's uh, it's one that's unsolvable, uh, it's always going to be different and random, um, as opposed to the enigmas which are technically solvable, but honestly you're probably going to forget the solutions after you play them. Um, I know I do because I'm stupid. Uh, but this one offers more, you could consider it more longevity, but like I said, you get 10 different scenarios with that. Probably going to forget them. Um, and you'll be playing with different people. You can't share uh, the Enigma cards. So if you don't go through the whole deck yourself, then there's no guarantee you're going to be drawing the one of the same. If you have the same scenario and you're drawing from the same eight cards, there's no guarantee that you'll draw the same card, you'll draw somebody else's card, which you don't necessarily know the solution for. So definitely some longevity in it. Um, I would say easily enough plays to, to make it uh, worth the price of the expansion, uh, which it loses me right now. But you know, it's standard uh, expansion price. I think it's maybe like 25 bucks, something like that. Uh, I will be doing a full rules overview of uh, Room 25 Escape Room at some point, and we'll also probably um, do a playthrough of Room 25 as well, so keep an eye on the channel for that.